Right, so now we're going to be making this render right here. So basically, this is the one which came out of um, Unreal Engine 5. And after some editing and some tweaking of the sky, um, we made it into this one. Uh, I used Google Photos app. Yeah, yeah, I used the Google Photos app to edit this. Uh, but obviously, you can use any other app as well. You can use Lightroom if you want, um, if you're on a mobile phone. Uh, you can even use the default um, Apple's default iPhone's editing app, photo editing app, or uh, you can even use something like Photoshop or something like that. Yeah, so you have a lot of options anyways. So let's start with making this render right here. So firstly, I'm just going to be opening Unreal Engine 5. And I'm just going to be keeping this around for um, as a reference so that we can keep this. Um, so yeah, so that we can model um, our scene similar to this. So what we did was that we basically added some Megascans assets, and then we added some, uh, we modified the clouds, uh, then we added a sun, and we uh, obviously made a lot of tweaks to the environment to make it look like, um, sort of like a nighttime look, if that makes sense. Um, and then we added a, a ton of fog as well. Yeah, so you can just follow along and it's gonna be pretty easy. Right, so what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna be opening a project which I am currently working on. Uh, so I'm just going to be opening that project. However, you can obviously create a new one if you want. Um, but yeah, I already have my assets imported into that. So I'm just going to be using that one. Otherwise, you can simply go to games and then create a blank project from that. Uh, so I'm just going to wait for Unreal Engine to open. And now we're inside Unreal Engine. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to be going to file, new level. And I'm just going to be creating a new empty level, create. And just press Control S so that we can save it. And I'm just going to be calling this snow SS. Perfect, let's press S and we are good to go. Now what I'm gonna do firstly is that I'm gonna be going to the landscape mode. Let's start with adding a landscape. So the size should be fine, create, and now we have a landscape. We're not gonna be doing any sculpting right now. Uh, so I'm not, next time I'm gonna go to window and I'm gonna be going to the ENV light mixer, environment light mixer, that's what it's called. Uh, I'm gonna create a skylight, atmospheric light, sky atmosphere, volumetric cloud, and finally, height fog. So now we have our scene. Uh, we have most of the lighting ready. Uh, now your clouds, your clouds are probably going to be looking different, and that's because I have my settings applied. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to be walking you through, um, walking you through the exact steps to get this sky. Uh, but I'm just going to be doing that in just a second. So right now, what I'm going to do firstly is that I'm going to go to my skylight and make sure that your real time capture is turned on. Now the reason for this is because if it's not turned on, then your shadows are going to be very dark, and it's not going to it's not going to look very good, right? So that's just something you need to do. Right, so what I'm gonna do before um, doing anything, I'm just gonna be adding some assets from Megascans and then we're gonna be creating a camera. The reason why we're gonna be creating a camera before actually adding all the assets is because is so that we can have an idea of the general um, general view of the camera. Uh, because obviously, if we add any assets which are outside the camera, they're just gonna be a waste of time and a waste of resources as well. Right, so I'm just gonna be adding assets where the camera is gonna be looking. So I'm just gonna go to add, add Quixel content, And just wait for that to open and right in the front we're going to see this arctic ice and snow uh, and so we are going to be using this collection so just oops my bad i'm going to go back to home and go to this collection and now what i can do is i can simply use assets from this one right so uh we are inside this pack alternatively what you can do is you can simply go to uh click this right here collections icon and then you can go to environment natural and then finally arctic ice and snow so that's how you can get there as well so now you have all these assets. So I'm just going to be starting. I'm just going to start to download some of these. Now I do have some already downloaded. So I'm, uh, so I'm not going to waste that much time of yours. Uh, so firstly, the one which I downloaded was the snowy ground. Uh, so this is already downloaded. So I'm just going to be adding this. You, of course, will have to um, first download this. After that, um, let me go ahead and maybe download this one. Huge snow pile. So this is going to be uh, this is going to act as sort of our mountain. Um, maybe this one as well snow embankment and embankment my bad um and we're not going to be needing a material right now because the thing is that all uh, the whole landscape is going to be covered by these assets and we're not really going to be seeing the landscape right so i don't i don't think we need to add a material to that if for example you want to add like a road in the middle you can do that as well um however actually you know what yeah you know what let's do that uh because this obviously this environment is pretty easy to make so let's uh let's sort of make something different something a little different and just add a road in the middle as well but yeah the technique is going to be the same so i'm just going to sign in real quick right so i just signed in and you're going to see that i have a lot of these assets already um downloaded so i think 
I had low quality of this one. So I would recommend you to generally go for um, assets. Just generally download medium quality of assets because otherwise they're going to look pretty, um, what do you call it, pretty low poly and they're not going to look that good. So yeah, medium quality should be the way to go. Unless, of course, you have a really slow computer, then you can go for low quality if you want. Um, right. So now what I'm going to do is that I'm going to be starting to add the assets. So firstly, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to add this snowy, snowy ground asset right here. Uh, so this is a pretty good asset because the thing is that it's pretty flat and it is it can be modified in, in, in a lot of ways, right? So for example, if I just scale it up in the Y axis, you're going to see that it still looks correct, doesn't it? Even though it's been uh, it has been stretched, it still looks fine. So that's the good thing about these mega scans assets. And so I'm just going to be using them like that. I'm just going to undo it real quick. And so let me just go ahead and add our camera first. Uh, so for the camera, what I'm going to do is that I'm simply going to go to add cinematic and then cine camera actor. And now with this uh, selected, with this camera selected, I'm just going to right click it and I'm going to press pilot. So what this is going to do is that this is going to basically put us inside the view of the camera. And so I'm just going to be moving my camera so that the mega scans asset is actually visible in our scene. So let's start working from this view, this view. However, before actually starting to work on this, I'm just going to be minimizing that. What I'm going to do is that I'm going to be tweaking some of the camera settings. Now the sensor width and the sensor height, these basically control um, sort of like the aspect ratio of your scene. Uh, so I'm just going to be setting both of them to something like 50 and 50 because we want, uh, because I want sort of like a square frame uh, in my scene. I think that should be, that should look good. So something like that should be fine. Actually, we can also go for something a little more cinematic. If you want to go for something more cinematic, you can just go for 65 by 27. So that's basically used in um, movies and stuff like that. So this is going to give you that widescreen look, which you get in movies. So let's go for that. Uh, usually when I'm posting stuff on Instagram or on my social medias, uh, what I do is I usually render it out in uh, render out a square format. Uh, but this time I'm just going to be using uh, a longer, uh, a widescreen look. And apart from that, let's go down to focus. I'm going to be disabling the focus right now. Uh, we might add it later on, but right now it's just, it's just going to be distracting for us. And so yeah, I'm just going to do that. Focal length again, I'm just going to be setting this to something like 30. However, this can be easily modified later on. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't want you to worry about this too much right now. Actually, let me just set it back to 35 for now. We can obviously tweak it later on. Everything else, I'm just going to leave it on default. Uh, because obviously we are going to be working on it later on. The only thing which I'm going to do before adding the assets is I'm going to be selecting the direction light and I'm going to be moving it somewhere there and maybe a little down so that we have an idea of where our sun is going to come from and how our scene is going to look. Maybe something like that. I think that should be fine. And um, yeah, let me just go ahead and add a post process, post process volume as well. So just go to add visual effects and post process volume and I'm just going to be moving it away from our camera because we don't want it to be distracting. Just move it down and with the selected make sure that uh, your infinite extent unbound is turned on so that it uh, whatever changes you make to the post process volume is going to affect the whole scene. Uh, and so I'm just going to go down to exposure. The metering mode I'm going to set to manual and the exposure compensation I'm going to set it to something like 10. 10 might be a little too much maybe something like 9 should be fine for now. However, obviously we are going to be making changes later on. Right, so that's perfect. Now let's start to add other assets as well. So what I'm going to do is that I'm just going to be importing one of all of these assets. Just one um, one piece of all of these assets so that we can, uh, so that once we have all of them inside our scene and all of them are visible to us, we can obviously start to um, sort of put them together and build the whole scene. Now this part is extremely subjective and I would highly recommend you to not copy my layout. I would recommend you to sort of try to come come up with something of your own. Um, but obviously you can, if you are a beginner, you can uh, copy this layout. It's going to help you to sort of build your own creativity. Let me place that one right there because that's a pretty good asset. And I think that, yeah, I think that's basically it. Usually something like four to five assets uh, should be good enough. Uh, so maybe I'm just going to get rid of that because this one is a little, it has a little weird shape. So I think that should be fine. Anyway, so now let's start uh, building the scene. So what I'm going to do, what I like to do usually is by I start to build from the very end, uh, the very far away part, and then I'm going to build, uh, start building the very close up part, and then I'm going to be adding, uh, and then I'm going to be filling it uh, in with the assets in the middle. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to be copying this one right here. And let's make a huge mountain in the back. 
Let me just bring this forward. Actually, this might be useful for a mountain as well. Anyways, let's start with that first. And I'm just going to be moving it away and I'm going to be scaling it up. Now make sure to scale it uniformly. Something like that. And I'm going to be going to my second viewport. Uh, and I'm just going to be going to unlet mode. If by the way, you don't have the second viewport, you can just simply go to window. Um, and then you can go down to viewports and viewport 2. Just make sure that that is checked and you're going to have another viewport in your scene. Right now, the problem with this is that this is way too close. So I'm just going to be going up and let's move this far away. Because obviously we want it to uh, be foggy as well. And then let's scale it up, something like that. I think that should be fine. And maybe move it a little back. And now we can try rotating it. I think something like that should be good. Obviously, we are going to be adding some fog later on. Uh, so it will look pretty good. And let me just scale it up like that as well that we have a sharper peak again this is also subjective if you want your uh, if you want your um, mountains to be very um, sort of flat and shallow you can do that as well however I'm gonna make my mountains pretty peak uh, pretty um, sharp because I think that's gonna make them look a little better scale this up again something like that and I'm gonna be rotating it again something like that and how about we actually move this a little back to uh, maybe something like that. And again, scale it up. That should be fine. Perfect. Uh, so now what we can do is we can actually maybe just scale it up a little more like that. And maybe move it even. I think that should be better. Yeah, I think that should be fine. Scale this up like that and like that as well. Perfect. Now let's start to build uh, the foreground. Uh, but before that, let me actually go ahead and fill in uh, that line right here. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to be using... Um, actually, you know what? Let me just use this asset right here. Hopefully, it's going to look good. So let me just select this and let me move it back. Something like that. And... What I'm going to be doing is that I'm going to be scaling it up quite a lot. And so basically the look that I'm going for is, let me just increase the speed of the camera, by the way, so that I can move fast, faster and make changes quicker. Uh, yeah, so basically the look that we're trying to give here is that this is sort of like a distant mountain. Uh, so this whole uh, scene is covered by a mountain range. So that's the look that we're sort of going for. But again, in your case, it can be something totally different. It might be like a valley or something like that, if that's what you're into. Um, yeah, I think something like that should be good. Yeah. Now I'm just going to be moving this right here. And now I'm just going to pull a shortcut. And that shortcut is going to be to sort of extend that something like that and maybe move it a little back as well yep it looks pretty decent and now we can start to work on the front but before that let me just go ahead and add some fog uh, because right now there is very little fog and it looks very weird uh, so I'm just gonna be moving this down and so for the fog we're gonna be using uh, what do you call it exponential height fog it's pretty simple firstly I'm just gonna be turning on volumetric fog now if I turn it on you're gonna see that your fog is gonna look pretty realistic uh, it just adds some more realism to it. And you can obviously control the color of your fog then as well. Um, but before that, let me just go ahead and also in my direction light, I'm just going to turn on light shaft occlusion. Now, this doesn't make that much of a difference in this scene. However, in many scenes, it does. And it just makes your, uh, just makes your light look a little better. And by the way, just be sure to save all. Just press the save all button right here so that your assets are saved. And uh, let me just go back to exponential height fog. And I'm just going to be increasing the density of this to something like 0 0.1 maybe something like that because obviously we want them to be pretty foggy I think that should look pretty good however right now the color of this fog isn't that great uh, so what I'm going to do is that I'm going to go down to uh, inside the volumetric fog I'm going to go to this albedo channel and I'm going to be setting this to something like I'm going to be giving it a bluish tint something like that 
and that should be fine maybe instead of 0 0.1 just do a 0 0.2 because yeah these are pretty far away and they should be pretty um what do you call it uh blurry uh pretty foggy uh and in this scene you're going to see that it's pretty similar however the mountains do look better for some reason and so let me just go ahead and try to adjust the mountains a little bit Again, my job here is just to show you how to make this scene, exactly what to make and um, what sort of uh, changes you want to make. That is up to you. And I would recommend you to use your own creativity for that. Anyways, that look, that's looking pretty good. Now we can move on to uh, maybe, let's maybe rotate the direction light a little bit, something like that. And I think that makes it look a lot better. It makes it look a lot like uh, this scene. However, I mean, obviously, it still looks pretty different. We are going to be making some changes later on. Anyways, so now let's move on to the foreground. So for the foreground, I'm just going to be starting to place the assets like that. Let me just rotate them like that. And yeah, so we're just going to have to sort of duplicate these assets again and again and just build out our whole scene. Um, and that's basically the whole... Uh, environment design thing you just duplicate assets you scale them up and you uh, modify them in some way and then you just add them once again that's all there is to it however obviously there is a lot of creativity involved so i would again recommend you to use your own ideas and spend a lot of time on pinterest or other um websites other art websites so that you can maybe get some inspiration and ideas from there that should be fine and let me just add that right there this time i'm going to be scaling it up in that axis something like that and i'm going to be moving it right there something like that should be good and let me, let me just move this up Maybe move it down, something like that. I think that should be fine. We can obviously change, make changes later on. But I think for now, that should be good. 